What's going on? Welcome to part 14 of our Intermediate Python series and part two of the object-oriented programming uh, mini-series within that series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is just taking this, you know, class and actually inputting it into an environment, basically. So we're going to code the environment part here and uh, and then we'll be able to get back into actual object-oriented programming. So really, this is even probably most mostly a Pygame tutorial just utilizing this blob class. Anyway, let's hop to it. So we're gonna import Pygame. At this point, you will need Pygame installed. And we're gonna import random because we are using random here and we need to make sure we're gonna be able to do that. Now we're gonna have a bunch of constants. We're gonna have width, that's gonna be 800. We're gonna have height, that's going to be uh, 600. And then we're gonna have some colors. These are just tuples of colors. They are RGB. And um, I forget, they're additive, I guess. I'm trying to think of the proper word. Someone can comment below the proper word. Maybe additive is it. Anyway, think of it as light. So R, G, B, we've got full red light, full green light, and full blue light. That creates white light when you have all of the lights. If you had no lights, zero, 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 that would be black. Anyway, we're gonna give blue, as you might guess, blue would be zero red zero green, but full blue. And then we'll have one more for now, and that's gonna be red. And red will be full red, zero uh, green, zero blue. Cool. So those are our colors. Now we're gonna define uh, the game display, and this is for Pygame. And this will be pygame.display.setMode, and set mode takes a tuple of your width and your height pygame.display. Good. Now what we're going to say is pygame.display.setCaption. Not really necessary, but we're going to call this blob world. And then we're going to specify the clock so we can kind of handle uh, frames per second as best as possible. Okay. So we're done with kind of the initial setup. Now we're going to come below this class. And I'm just going to make some space so I can scroll up. Generally, PEP8 suggests uh, one line of white space between functions and two between classes. So we'll define draw environment here. Environment, uh, for now, we'll just leave it empty. And we're going to say game display dot fill white. So what's happening here is for every frame, you have to redraw whatever you want to that frame. And this is our way of clearing the frame, so it'll have a white background and we'll draw on top of that white background. So we're drawing, or we're filling it with white and then we would in theory draw on top of it. For now, we're not gonna do anything. Um, and then we're gonna run pygame.display.update and that actually updates to your screen. So when it comes to computer graphics, it's not necessarily the most processing intensive or the most kind of uh, time intensive or whatever. Uh, to to bring graphics to screens, but it is a it is a challenging process nonetheless. And so generally, what you'll do is you'll actually in the background, like when we say game display dot fill white or game display fill white, um, the user if they slowed the the game down enough, right, or watched it in slow mo, it's not like the background first is going to go all white and then little objects are going to be updated to the screen. That's not how it's going to work. What Pygame is going to do is truly in the back end. It's going to, okay, it's going to say, okay, we're filling with white. And then it says, okay, maybe we're going to draw an object, which we will. So maybe we've got a blob here. It's going to draw a blob there. And then when it's all said and done, it's going to say, okay, this is the final um, final result that we actually want to be the new frame. And then it sends it to the screen that time for real. And this is sending it to the screen. This is in the background waiting for us to basically call this. So pygame.display.update, cool. And then we're also going to... Actually, we'll leave that empty for now. One space or one line between un functions. We're now going to have our main function. This is just going to contain the main part of our, our program. So first, we're going to do uh, well, we can define. Well, first, we'll we'll define the blob here in a moment. First, let's just let's make the environment. So while true, we're going to say for event in pygame dot event dot uh, get. This just grabs all the events from pygames event. And we're going to say if event.type is equal to pygame.create, 
quit. So if it's a Pygame quit event, um, this is basically if they click the X in the top right corner or top left, depending on what operating system, I suppose. Uh, anyway, if that happens, we're gonna say pygame.quit and then we're actually gonna also quit. Stop the program. Otherwise, uh, still under the while true, not so many over. Then what we're gonna do is draw environment. So basically if it's not a quit event, this will draw environment and then we will clock.tick 60. And this is to hopefully if we can process quickly enough, we will get 60 frames per second, uh, but we will not second, but we will not, uh, we'll, we'll not go over 60 frames per second. It, this, this is our way of capping the frames per second because our game, the actual speed in which things happen in our game, we're not working with a physics engine or anything like that. So it's gonna be entirely contingent on the frames per second themselves. So um, game designers are probably like, oh, the horror, but anyways, that's how we're gonna do it. So uh, we're gonna save that. And uh, now we're gonna finally end with our, uh, if name equals, oh, don't forget your string there, main. What do we wanna do? We wanna run main. Okay, let's run it and see if that works. I'm expecting some sort of typo. Something is gonna be like, Harrison, you're dumb. Well, I'm expecting something at least. Nothing's happening, I'm pressing run. There we go. Oh, okay, great. We actually got what we wanted, surprising. Okay, so as we can see, it's just a white screen because that's all that's happening, but our environment so far is acting the way we would hope. That's good. So uh, we'll close that. And now let's actually get the blob to interact in this environment. So first what we can do is we, we need to create the object. So we're gonna say red blob equals, it's gonna be a, a blob object. And if you recall, blob object does take one, basically when you initialize this, because the dunder init method has a, an argument here for color, when you actually create the object, you must pass a, pass a color, but you could say like color equals red and actually have a default, right? Just like default parameters and functions. We're not going to, but you could. So at least not right now. Eventually we'll talk about why you might want to do that. But for now, we're not gonna do that. Uh, but blob, and we're gonna say that color will be red. That's really all we need to do. Uh, just just as a quick aside, as, as far as like Pepe aid and stuff is concerned. Luckily this line is short enough and it, it like makes total sense. Red blob equals a blob. When we see the words red, it's relatively easy to, to uh, take from this that hmm, chances are we're creating a red blob. You know, that's pretty simple. But as time goes on in, in, this, in this, uh, this class gets much larger and maybe there's a lot more arguments, eventually it gets to the point where the things that you're seeing, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical just reading this. You don't, you almost have to like go back to the, the class and read it from it. And uh, so a lot of times it does make sense to say like color equals red. Um, but in this case, actually it would be like this. Uh, but in this case, it's not necessary, but eventually we will hit a time when we've got a lot of parameters and we're exceeding 79 characters, but I'm still gonna suggest that you do this in times where it might be ambiguous or um, not informative what that parameter or argument is. Anyway, red blob, we're passing, uh, oh, we're not doing anything. We've just created the object, but now in draw environment, let's go ahead and pass red blob to draw environment. And then in the draw environment function, let's say, yeah, let's take a blob. So that's gonna take the blob object. And then after we've filled the game display as white, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say pygame.draw.circle. Where are we gonna draw the circle? We're gonna draw it to the game display. Uh, what color is a circle? Well, it's blob.color, whatever that happens to be. What is the location of the blob? That's blob.x, blob.y. And then what is the size, basically the radius of the circle? Blob.size. So maybe it is pixels and, ra it's radius, not diameter, but radius and pixels. Uh, I'm just referencing this four to eight. I think that's what it is. Anyway, make sure that this line occurs after the fill white. If you have it before fill white, it will, Literally, it will draw the circle and it will paint white all over it and that would not be good. So make sure that's coming second. So now 
barring typos or logic errors, we should get a red blob on the screen. Sure enough, we do. It's hard to see on this screen, but I think you can see it. It's right here. Awesome. And you should be seeing that on your screen. Now, how might we uh, get this to be a little more animated? Well, basically anywhere in the draw environment function, we could just simply call blob.move. So this is an important thing to take into consideration that when we pass this blob object or blob.move empty parameter or empty parentheses, let's run that really quick. Okay, now your little blob should be kind of wiggling around. Now, one thing to note is that is modifying the actual blob itself, red blob from blob.move is being moved. So if we were to come down here uh, and print, let's just print the X and Y. So red uh, blob dot X and red blob dot Y. So those will just print out to console. You can see they're actually being moved. The original object is being modified through this name. So this name is, is, is still modifying that object. And later on, you'll see that you can pass even more, many objects at one time, and they still do get, um, get modified. So um, I think that's a good spot for us to stop. We still have a lot to cover, obviously, with object-oriented programming. And like I said, this tutorial was more of getting the Pi game kind of environment set up um, and kind of working with that object. So anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns uh, up to this point, if you're having any problems with Pi game or whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.